Welcome back. This crucial news overseas. Protests are heating up in Israel. This after the army arrested dozens of Palestinians. Those arrests came after two Israeli soldiers were shot and killed at a bus stop. Hamas called for a day of unrest in response. A moment ago, our team witnessed a 13-year-old Palestinian boy shot in the leg as these protests broke out. Once again, Ian Lee is there uh, following all the developments. Walk us through this. Now, well, Poppy, we were in Ramallah and parts of the West Bank today, and there's a heavy security presence there. Many checkpoints, uh, searching cars, looking for the perpetrators that killed those two soldiers. Uh, but meanwhile, we had these protests in and around Ramallah and other parts of the West Bank and Gaza. And most of these protests, there were dozens of Palestinians out there squaring off with the Israeli army, throwing rocks. Uh, and uh, the Israeli army responding with tear gas. But we went to one spot, which is near the Beit El settlement and Jalazon refugee camp. And that's where we saw a handful of Palestinians and Israeli settlers hurling rocks and insults at each other. And that's when we saw one Palestinian boy, 13 years old, he was throwing that rock. And then we heard two gunshots and the boy was shot in the lower leg. We don't know his condition. Medical workers were able to get to him quickly. Uh, but this just highlights uh, kind of the tension that has been in the West Bank today. I asked the Israeli military about that specific incident. Uh, they said that they were using riot dispersal measures, which include live fire, to disperse what they described as a riot. Poppy. Ian, it's been a violent week, as you said, a lot of developments. You have the announcement of the legalization of what were illegal settlements as well in the West Bank right. by Netanyahu's government. Uh, the combination of factors there, do you feel from on the ground that we're at the point of a serious escalation? It's hard to tell right now at this point, Jim, but you can really look at the last year. Since the United States declared that they were going to move the embassy to Jerusalem and that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel, we've seen this uptick in tensions with sporadic violence that gets very serious and can, at times we believe could lead to a war only for... Uh, regional powers like Egypt and the UN to bring them back to the negotiating table and really avert a further crisis. But when you look at the West Bank, this in particular has been, the violence has been rising there. Just this last week, we had another attack, a drive-by shooting where seven Israelis were injured. One woman was pregnant. Her baby was delivered prematurely. That baby died. And, and so we have seen this uptick in violence. And that really does always have that chance to snowball into greater violence, especially if both sides, uh, you have the Israelis uh, trying to act tough, they say, uh, by legalizing those settlements, also making those arrests. But then you have the Palestinian factions also saying they want an escalation of the confrontation. Mm. Ian Lee, we're glad you're there on the ground witnessing it, reporting it. Thank you very much. Ahead. Let's talk now about the Israeli Defense Forces. They're currently in the explosive stages of an operation to destroy tunnels on the border with Lebanon. This has been the big news in the Middle East. If you're there, you would see this, right? Look at this video. These are some of the tunnels that we're talking about. The operation is taking place along a stretch of the border without a wall or a fence, and it's raising concerns of a potential live fire exchange. And you know, those, kind of, those things have a tendency to spark something much bigger, right? Israel is alleging that the tunnels were constructed by Hezbollah with the cooperation of the Lebanese government. Former Pentagon official Michael Malouf, he has just returned from Lebanon, where he has had his ear to the ground, so to speak, had uh, conversations with many contacts, and is here to make some news. What did you learn, Michael? And by the way, welcome back. Thank you very much. There is provocation on both sides. Uh, there is a, a deep concern that uh, Israel is provoking uh, Hezbollah into uh, reacting. Israel is provoking Correct. Hezbollah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So and this tunnel thing is it real? Well, yeah, it is real, but it is, but it's, it's, it's defensive in nature. Uh, uh, Hezbollah does not have any intention of attacking, initi initiating any preemptive attack on Israel. Okay. They are defending Lebanon, but you're going to see that. Uh, 
Israel has been violating the very UN resolution that it accuses Hezbollah of doing, and yet corporate media doesn't report this. How is Israel doing that? Because that's a heck of an accusation. Well, that while you just I was made there, against Israel, right? While I was there, yeah, uh, they were overflying Beirut and all of Lebanon, probably doing reconnaissance, to, in total violation of UN resolutions. And yet, they, uh, Israel claims that building these tunnels is a violation of the same resolution, of the, the resolution that ended the 34-day the uh, 2006 yeah. uh, fight. Explain that to us, because uh, some of those of us who are not that familiar, I know you're very mm -hmm. much inside baseball because you're very close to this. So Israel is not sp supposed to be doing these flies that's, flyovers that's, that's correct. over Lebanon, but they're, they're doing it anyway. They're doing it you anyway. you witnessed it yourself. Yeah, yes, I did. So they are violating what they signed, they, they signed up to do. That's correct. Do you expect, you and I had a conversation about this, and you intimated to me that it seemed to feel to you, and you're a former Pentagon guy, you've got contacts over there, that something is coming, that, th yes. that there's some kind of conflict, maybe yes. incursion. What do you su suspect is happening, is about to happen, and why? There is a building crescendo. Uh, 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 Israel does not, is concerned that uh, Hezbollah is building uh, um, uh, Missile, missile components for, for accuracy within, within Beirut. Mm. They have them buried. Even, in, in fact, Netanyahu went, on, uh, went before the uh, UN General Assembly and, and broad, broadcast this. We're, we're, and then Netanyahu then went to Brussels unexpectedly and met directly with uh, Pompeo, Mike Pompeo, the U.S. Secretary of State. Uh -huh. Now, this is in parallel with what happened a number of years ago during the Bush administration, just before Israel launched an attack into Syria on the nuclear reactor that the North Koreans were helping the Syrians build. So uh, having these kind of direct contacts might be indicative of something building up. Final question. Is Israel feeling empowered because the United States has been able to rightfully claim its strategic position over Iran with the sanctions once again? Well, it's, this is what's provoking it. The Israelis, who I, I believe believe that they are the eternal victims in all of this, uh, are trying to show that they are being uh, victimized uh, with aggression from Iran, and, and, and they're pointing fingers at their proxy, Hezbollah. So, and to, to, to in, the, in the eyes of Israel, Hezbollah and Iran are one? One and the same. Interesting. Interesting. I'm, I'm so glad that you shared this information with us as thank usual. You. Michael Maloof, thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Talking about tomorrow, is Israel about to strike Lebanon? Did Maria Butina try to influence U.S. policy, and if so, how? And then how much intellectual property has China actually stolen? There's a new report out on this that you have just got to see. We begin, though, with the question of whether Israel is about to strike Lebanon because the circumstances seem to be ripe for some kind of aggression. So much so that even the United States, who usually asks how high when Israel says jump, has rejected today Israel's request to impose sanctions on Lebanon no doubt fearing that it could be dragged into a potential quagmire, as we had described. Do they fear the inevitable? Are we headed for another Israel-Lebanon conflict that could this time be much more dangerous from a global perspective? We're going to address all of that here in just a minute. But first, I need to tell you that the U.S. did actually act on more sanctions today, but not against Lebanon, not at Israel's behest. It will come as no surprise to you who the target is. Iran. Here is Secretary of State Mike Pompeo at the United Nations. We risk the security of our people if Iran continues stocking up on ballistic missiles. We risk, we risk escalation of conflict in the region if we fail to restore, restore deterrence. And we convey to all other malign actors that they too can defy the Security Council with impunity if we do nothing. Our goodwill gestures have been futile futile in correcting the Iranian regime's reckless missile activity and its destructive behaviors. No nation can dispute that Iran is in open defiance of UN Security Council Resolution 2231. Joining us now is uh, former Pentagon official Michael Malouf with exclusive information about Israel's intentions in Lebanon. Uh, Michael, thanks so much again for joining us. Pleasure. Uh, what have your sources told you that we need to know tonight? Uh, just today, I was informed that the Israeli government is informing officials, I won't say from, uh, to where, but that uh, there is an intention by, by Israel 
to attack. You, you can't share with us who the sources are, I understand. No. Okay, we respect that. Um, is this a made somebody who represents a major government? Yes. Somebody who Israel then turned to and said, we need to let you know that we might be doing this. Yes, that it, that there will be a day. They, they told the, uh, this government that, uh, uh, that, that, that this will be occurring. What does it usually mean when Israel tells a foreign government of their potential intentions? It, it generally signifies that there is a, a, indeed a, a determination to go ahead. Already the Israeli government has announced that it that uh, uh, dealing with dealing with Hezbollah, particularly on the on the uh, uh, on refining the missiles for more accuracy, mm -hmm. is a red line, and we're seeing this crescendo building more and more uh, on the on the Israeli side, and uh, and and once again, as I told you yesterday, there have been uh, continuous flyovers of of, of Beirut. Uh, in very recent days by, by the Israelis. So, and you made the point that then both sides would be in violation of the U.N. Yes, resolution. Yes. Let me ask you a question about this. Let's, mm -hmm. Right now they're saying they're only going in because of the tunnels, but if this mm -hmm. thing does escalate, mm -hmm. if there is a round two mm -hmm. of the 2006 war between mm -hmm. Israel and Lebanon, how would it be different this time and to whose advantage? Well, it, any I think what's happening here is that uh, Israel is looking to uh, for provocation, they are they are testing where they might be able to go in. Uh, certainly, building tunnels is 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 a violation, but at the same time, so are flyovers. What they're hoping to uh, extract from Hezbollah, I think, is a reaction. That then will be a basis for them then to for the Israelis then to move in. But but if they do go in again, mm -hmm. again I mean, mm -hmm. and the reason I'm asking these questions is mm -hmm. because, as as a citizen of the United States, heck, as mm -hmm. a citizen of the world, I would be mm -hmm. concerned if there's sure. another type of uh, conflagration in that sure. area. Um, we're seeing what's going on in Syria. Yep. We're seeing the Iranian reaction. Sure. We're seeing the possibility of the United States getting involved. Mm -hmm. Which this would this be a bigger deal? And if so, how big and yeah, why? Even even a small event could absolutely cause a catastrophic uh, event within in the Middle East and, and my sources uh, are telling me that it would uh, they're very concerned that the entire region entire Middle East region will erupt as a, even with the smallest episode okay but who 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 for example would jump in on the side of Hezbollah for example who uh, I'm hearing this time it, it will not just be Shia out of out of uh, Syria or within Lebanon or and just Hezbollah. It will be Shia from all the countries of the region. We're talking. I, I've heard terms of a million descending upon Israel if that occurs. Why would Israel, who is still dealing with its own issues with Hamas? Uh, mm -hmm you know, uh, in Gaza, mm -hmm. want to go into something like this, dealing with Hezbollah, who, mm -hmm. by the way, seems much more uh, powerful than Hamas. Oh, it is. It's, it's, it's even more powerful than the Lebanese army, it's, uh, and, it, and it's battle-hardened from right. all of its experiences. It will, it will um, I think that we're going we're gonna to see that uh, they, will, they will react and respond very, very uh, rapidly. The United, I think what the, what the Israelis are attempting to do is drag in the United States on this because they want the U.S. involvement in this as part because the Israelis mm. feel that, th in fact, they told the official that I spoke to today that uh, uh, Iran and Hezbollah uh, are are contemplating attacking Israel, which is not which is historically not going to be, be the in, case. In fairness, though, Israel has every right to defend sure. itself sure. if somebody is building tunnels sure. into their territory, right? Sure. Sure. And if that's what they're saying, there's nothing wrong with that. No. No, it, it, it's 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 whether they escalate beyond that, right? Well, and and we've seen this happen before with Netanyahu going to uh, meet with Pompeo in Brussels the, uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. We also then saw that uh, that this that there's a certain parallel with, with what occurred just before uh, the, uh, Israel attacked Syria's uh, nuclear uh, uh, reactor uh, in, during the Bush administration. Uh, Netanyahu went and visited high-level officials. There is a precarious situation going on. Final question, because I'm being told to wrap up, and I know mm -hmm. this is very important, though. Netanyahu's damaged right now Correct. politically because Correct. of the criminal investigation right. going on. Do you see that as a reason for him to be more apt to maybe be I, a little more dangerous at the I, time? I, th I think we're seeing uh, him uh, being cornered, and uh, because of his domestic situation, we're basically seeing and I believe, a, and this is my personal opinion, a tail wagging the dog. Michael Malouf, um, really interesting information. I'm glad you shared with us uh, this, and uh, let's certainly hope it doesn't happen. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.